from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Um, welcome. I suspect you've already been welcomed by the Dean earlier on, but welcome on behalf of the Dean and Chapter of the Cathedral and also all three bishops. It is a privilege to host you here today. We stand before the throne of God with his holy men and women, saints, martyrs, kings and queens, prophets and priestly people, from every nation and race, tribe and language, blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor, power and might, be to our God forever and ever. Christ calls us to share the heavenly banquet of his love with all the saints in earth and heaven, knowing our unworthiness and sin let us ask from him both mercy and forgiveness. You raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the broken in heart. Christ, have mercy. You make one by your spirit the torn and divided. Lord, have mercy. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to himself and cleanse you from all your sins that you may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. We pray, God of all tribes and peoples and tongues, who called your servant John Coleridge Patterson to witness in life and death to the gospel of Christ amongst the peoples of Melanesia, grant us to hear your call to service and to respond trustfully and joyfully to Jesus Christ our Redeemer who is alive and reigns with you 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. But filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, give praise your servants of the Lord. O oh, praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. From this time forth and forevermore, from the rising of the sun to its setting, let the name of the Lord be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God that has his throne so high? yet humbles himself to behold the things of heaven and earth. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ashes to set them with princes, with the princes of his people. He gives the barren woman a place in her house and makes her a joyful mother of children. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I'm giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. So may I speak and share in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please do be seated.
A 14-year-old diligent pupil, Matthew was sitting nervously along with his classmates awaiting the return of his end-of-year history exam paper. This wasn't quite a make-or-break moment. He was, after all, continuing with history studies at GCSE level. But the mark in this paper would determine the set he would be assigned to. The teacher approached each pupil in turn and placed the paper face down on the desk. Then the moment came. You can turn them over now, said the teacher. Timothy duly turned over his paper and looked at it. Unusually written in the top right-hand corner were two grades. A for creativity, but F or fail for the answers. Now, to understand these grades, we need to consider a number of the questions posed and the answers given. In response to the question, in which war was Napoleon killed, Timothy had written his last one. In response to the question, where was the American Declaration of Independence signed, Timothy had written at the bottom of the page. And in response to the question, what is the main reason for divorce, Timothy had written a one-word answer, marriage. A, star for creativity, F for the answers. Whilst we can see the humorous side of this scenario, there is within it an important yet subtle truth. The scriptures teach us that there's a gap between our good intentions our aspirations to lead holy lives that honour God and those around us, and the lives, actually, that we live day by day, the reality of our lived lives. We live our lives in this same gap. Some days the gap can feel larger than on other days. At times the gap in other people's lives can seem larger than in our lives, as we observe and experience them. But we must never be lulled. We all have this gap. We all have logs in our eyes. Life in this gap is a mixture of exhilaration and achievement, awe and wonder, and disappointment and hurt. Life in this gap can be messy and disruptive. We experience the consequences of this gap in our lives and can contribute to the way others experience their lives too. That is why, as we have done today, we confess our sins. The reality of our lives lived in the gap. At the beginning of our liturgy today, as we do every time we gather, but this is only part of the story. For the message of hope that we have is that through Christ and his life laid down out of love for the world, we are forgiven. So F is not fail on our paper. F is for forgiven. We gather and share together today as those supporting the mission of the Anglican Church of Melanesia because we have experienced firsthand God's forgiveness and seek to support its continued proclamation in the islands. We engage in holistic mission, caring for the whole person as an outworking of this message. We engage in the institutional life of the church and nation by invitation to enable the church to make her contribution in the wider debate. We work to enhance our understanding of the impact of climate change across the region. We do so because, like those who have gone before us, we proclaim Christ, his death and resurrection, and seek to be shaped by this message. In answer to the question put to me recently, in a verbal type of exam, what verse summarizes your faith? I replied, not one verse, but two from Colossians chapter 1, 
which coincidentally was the epistle set on Friday the 8th of September. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. We know the history of the Christian church includes martyrdom of lives laid down in the proclamation of this message of forgiveness. We've heard once again today the very moving final section recorded in the Acts of the Apostles of the martyrdom of St. Stephen. Remember in this cathedral church, as elsewhere in the Anglican Communion, the lives of the seven Melanesian brothers given in the pursuit of peace and reconciliation in the name of the Prince of Peace. With all the saints, may they rest in peace and rise in glory. There is a distinctiveness, you see, to the story of the Anglican Church of Melanesia and the religious communities of the islands that we are charged with keeping. We are trusted friends drawn across a number of differing dioceses and contexts who are able to raise funds to support holistic mission. We are a collage of the like-minded who bring their differing skills, time and talents to supporting the mission of the Anglican Church of Melanesia and the religious communities of the islands. We do so in response to the call upon our lives as Christians to love and lay down our lives for our friends. We're called to see this in broad terms as it relates to our time, our talents, our energy, our aspirations, because Christ laid down his life for us. In what way is God calling you to lay down your life for the Anglican Church of Melanesia in our day? Our motivation in doing so must always be that of love. Love for God and neighbour, the agape love that led Jesus to the cross, the agape love Jesus spoke about on numerous occasions to his disciples. But it's all too easy isn't it, to speak of love. In the summer of 2019, Heather, my wife, and I visited Kenya, the country of Heather's birth. On the return flight from Mombasa to Istanbul, I watched the film Stan and Ollie, starring Steve Coogan as Stan Laurel and John C. Riley as Oliver Hardy, focusing on the latter years of the world-famous comedy duo's life together. The film zooms in on their personal relationship, how they embarked in 1953 on a grueling musical tour across the UK and Ireland. Their relationship wasn't always easy. Not surprising given, really, given differences in personality and temperament. On the boat journey to Ireland to continue a tour, they attempt to come together and reconcile their differences. Stan says to Ollie, in an outpouring of emotion, but I love you, Ollie. In reply, Ollie says, no, you don't. You love the idea of loving us. No, you don't. You love the idea of loving us. I find this very challenging, especially when I hear again the message from John's Gospel as set for today's service. Do I love God or am I in love with the idea of loving God? Do I love my neighbour as myself or am I in love with the idea of loving my neighbour as myself? Is this a case of me giving myself a star for creativity and F for failure? By no means. Rather, A star for authenticity and F for forgiveness. 
for this is life in the gap. It has been a privilege to serve as a trustee of Melody Museum Mission UK over the last 14 years. To be part of the story of holistic mission as the church responds to the challenges of the messiness of the world. As I stand down as a trustee today in the cathedral church where I was ordained deacon 20 years ago, I find myself praying a prayer based on Mark 9 and the encounter between Jesus and the father of a son who had been born with an evil spirit. It's as the Jesus and the disciples return from the Mount of Transfiguration. You may wish to pray this prayer too. Lord, I love you. Help me to overcome the temptation to merely love the idea of loving you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I present to you Ian Davenport and Olu Olujugba, who have been for some time thinking to become associates of the community of the Sisters of Melanesia. I therefore agree that with your consent, they should be admitted to the membership of the associates. Ian and Olu, you who stand here before God and this congregation, have been thinking to become associates of the community of the Sisters of Melanesia for some time, and we are now willing that you should be admitted as associates of the community. But first we must know if you are still truly willing and ready. I ask you therefore, is it your own wish to become an associate of the community of the Sisters of Melanesia. Do you fully understand what you must do as an associate of the Sisters of Melanesia? Yes. Will you accept and follow the rules of the associates set before you by the Sisterhood? Yes. Are you then ready to make your promise? I have here um, two medals which I'm going to present to Olu and to Ian as a reminder of their commitment today to pray for the work of the Sisters of Melanesia. Our help is in the name of the Lord, made heaven and earth. Lord God, maker of heaven and earth, you care for all things and you are the protector of all. Bless, we pray you, O Lord, these medals, and may those who wear them show not only by what they wear, but also by their lives and deeds, that they belong to those who truly serve you, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and rules with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. I, Olu Olojuba, promise before God and this congregation that while I am an associate of the community of the Sisters of Melanesia, I will faithfully keep the rules that are set before me. I, Ian Davenport, promise before God and this congregation that while I am an associate of the community of the Sisters of Melanesia, 
I will faithfully keep the rules that are set before me. Olu, I admit you as an associate of the community of the Sisters of Melanesia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ian, I admit you as an associate of the community of the Sisters of Melanesia, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Everlasting God, you have freely given new birth to us, your servants, by water and the Holy Spirit, and have given us forgiveness for all our sins. Strengthen us, we pray you, Lord, with the Holy Spirit, the giver of strength, and day by day give us more of your many gifts of power, a spirit that is wise and understanding, a spirit that knows what is right and wrong, a spirit that knows you and truly loves you. Fill us, Lord, with a holy fear of you who now live and rule, one God forever and ever. Amen. And we pray together. Almighty Father, bless the work of the associates of the community of the Sisters of Melanesia. Be with us at all times and teach us to follow and obey our promises. May we be strong to serve you in the work which you have called us to do, serving our people in a spirit of joy and love, and sharing in the work of the sisterhood. May those whom we work among support us in prayer and other ways, and always encourage us in what we do, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Ian and Olu, go further into the world in peace. Be brave, keep alert, and be ready at all times to serve the Lord with thankful hearts. Help the poor, strengthen the weak, and be full of the joy and power of the Spirit, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you, be upon you, and remain with you forever. Amen. before they go and sit down, have, as we have just uh, heard and seen, um, committed themselves to pray for the work of the Sisters of Melanesia. I think it'd be good to give them uh, a round of applause for taking on that commitment. Thank you. <laughs> and if you're still slightly wondering what all that was about, um, it is possible in this country to become an associate of the Sisters of Melanesia, one of the religious orders in Melanesia, or indeed a companion of the uh, Melanesian Brotherhood. And if you're interested in taking on that commitment in partnership to uh, remember in prayer the work of those religious orders, then please do come and see me at the end of this service. Thank you. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who have been taught by your Holy Word to give thanks and to pray for all people. So now we give you thanks and praise for all your blessings. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your unfailing love shed on the cross, for your grace and forgiveness, for your gift of friendship and unity. We thank you especially this morning for our friendship and link with the Church of Melanesia.
and we thank you for all our bishops in all our dioceses, our priests, deacons, laity, and our religious communities, and for all who are gathered here today. We thank you especially also for the newly admitted associates of the Sisters of Melanesia. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask you to receive our prayers for the whole Church of Christ throughout the world. That it may be filled with your spirit of goodness, peace, unity, and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the rulers of the nations, and especially for your servant, King Charles, and all who have authority and rule for all our world, especially for all our world leaders, our prime minister, and for all our MPs, that they may rule over us with your wisdom, your integrity, justice and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide and help, we pray, for those who are working for the spread of your good news in every place. We pray especially for all missionaries throughout our world and for all the evangelists spreading your word. Father God, we pray that you would bring to light the light of your spirit to all places of work, learning, and healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask you, Heavenly Father, that your great love and kindness may comfort and help all who are in trouble, sorrow, need, or sickness. We bring before God those known to us. We pray for the loved ones, especially this moment, for your strength and your comfort to rest upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, we pray for your servants departed this life in your faith and fear. We praise you for all your saints, for whose goodness we give you thanks and whose good ways we pray that we may follow and enter with them into your endless joy. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for your sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand for the peace. God will speak peace to his people, to those who turn to him in their hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Do greet one another safely in the name of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. Therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. 
Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we count you, thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Believing the promises of God, let us pray as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God, here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light and life.
Let us pray. Keep, O Lord, your church with your perpetual mercy, and because without you our human frailty cannot but fall, keep us ever by your help from all things hurtful, and lead us to all things profitable to our salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It's been an absolute joy to share this Eucharist with you. Um, With your permission, um, choir, can we just flip the order and do the hymn first? Is that okay? Don't look too terrified by that. Hopefully, uh, whoever's playing the organ heard that too. Uh, But I think what we'll do is do the final hymn, then we can have choir with us helping us sing it, uh, and then we'll do the blessing. Um, Thank you for being here. I look forward to spending further time with you over lunch. Please stand to sing our final hymn. Please bow your heads as we pray for God's blessing. May God, who kindled the fire of his love in the hearts of the saints, pour upon you 
the riches of his grace. Amen. May he give you joy in their fellowship and a share in their praises. Amen. May he strengthen you to follow them in the way of holiness and to come to the full radiance of glory. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.